In the previous video, we saw how we could pick out markers out of trace files. Now the actual setup of the system we've been studying looks like this. We have the user PC, a wide area network, then we have a web server and we have a database server. We have two capture points. The first is adjacent to the PC and the second is adjacent to the web server. But because of the arrangement of the connections here and the topology of this part of the network, at capture point two we see web traffic that's going in and out of the web server, but we also see the database traffic in the same trace. And uh, because it's in the same trace, it's um, time synchronized, which is very useful. The first thing I'm going to do is try to find the markers in the traces. So let's go back here. I'm going to load up the trace captured at capture point one. And let's load the trace. Now I'm not quite sure which of these traces I need from capture point two, but I'm going to select all of those on the afternoon of the 19th of the fourth. So I'm going to start with this number 39, 40 and 41. So we'll load those. Now all we need to do is just to quickly run Workbench to find the markers. In the PC trace, it's found markers one and two. And if you remember, we've been focusing on marker number two, which had a, a 30 second response time, I think. And then we find that we have a matching marker in this trace here. Without further ado, I'm going to just quickly go straight to Wireshark at this point. Here's the marker, and you can see that I still have transum active. And so I'm going to enter a command to just pick out all of the transum traffic. Now you can see that we have an awful lot of um, activity here. So what I now need to do is just pick out the traffic for the user that I'm interested in. And I'm going to do that by IP address. And as a shortcut, because the marker came from the PC that I'm interested in, I'm just going to pick the source address and I'm going to add that as a filter. And now we see the marker and we see exactly the same pattern as we saw in the PC trace. We see the 30, 29 second response time here, uh, followed by this get for the, um, the browser icon, and then we see our marker. So this is the area that we're interested in. Now I'm going to remove the, the address here so that I can look more widely at what's going on in particular. I'm interested in the traffic going to the database now. We've seen that there's a 29 second response time here and just here you can see a 29 second response time from the database. So this looks like a database problem. Now one thing, um, I've, I've been lucky here because the database query and response is almost directly after my um, request from my PC. But if I wanted to know, if I wanted to just see the database um, activity, plus I wanted to see my marker, we go back to this filter term, but in this case, I'm going to add an or here. You can see that the database is actually uh, listening and operating on port 1433. So I've just put in a simple or function. And now I have my marker and there's my database request. Okay, so I think we've um, successfully proven that this is a database problem.